be on camera? It's order. Okay, so the weather is finally cooling off here in Texas. I'm gonna take advantage of it. We've been wanting to uh, put an awning here just for the barbecue pit and also just some shaded uh, general seating. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I've never done anything like this before, but at this point I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to tackle this project. So stick around if you wanna see how I do it. Did I do okay? I first thought to make a new roof line going underneath this one. However, very quickly decided that it would look much nicer if I were able to tie into this existing roof line and just slightly change the pitch. So in order to do that, I first had to tear off a few of the shingles, the existing fascia board, um, a little bit of the decking, as well as this two by four that was blocking the end of the rafter tails. And that way I have access to all of these rafter tails so I can tie my new roof line into this existing one. With that demo work done, I then started working on setting my post. And I first tried to use my drill on the hammer drill setting. However, this concrete is so difficult to get through, I ended up renting a corded hammer drill instead. Now it's kind of difficult to see, but I did pull a chalk line so that I could make sure that all four of my post brackets were gonna be in an absolute straight line. Where these posts are setting, the ground is actually on a slight slope. So what I ended up having to do was set the post in place with it still long, and then I would set it at level and ask my husband to come and mark the top of the brackets. And this gave me the exact angle that I needed to cut the post at. But with the post being so thick and also it being an angled cut, I couldn't use my circular saw. So I resorted to using a hand saw to make these cuts. Next, I moved up to the top so I can start working on cutting out the notch that will hold the 2x8 header I plan to use. And to make this notch, I used my circular saw just to make multiple cuts in the area that I needed chipped out so that afterwards I could use a hammer to break it all loose. After breaking all of the pieces loose, I came back with a chisel just to make the surface a little bit more smooth. Then from there, I was able to cut the post to its final height, making three cuts with the circular saw, and then having to finish it off with the hand saw. And that is one post complete. So now I can set it in place and attach it to its bracket. I went to the bottom and attached it with a few screws and then repeated the process for the other post. Now, of course, the ground here is not level, so to make sure that all the posts come out to be the exact same height, I would set the 2x8 header into place, have one person hold the next post plumb while another person held it up until it was perfectly level. Then the post could be marked, taken down, then I could repeat the process by cutting the angled bottom, the notch at the top for the 2x8, and then cutting it to its final height and attaching it. The existing roof line of the shop actually extends past the two outside most posts. So whenever it came time to installing the two by eight header, what I did was set it in place and line it up to be in the center of the second post and then leave all of the excess hanging off that first post. Then for the remaining headers, I would just take a measurement from the center of one post to the center of the next, making sure to check for plumb on these posts before setting the screws. At this point, I was only worried about making sure the posts were parallel to one another. All right, and then it was on to installing the rafters. I am changing the pitch slightly because the existing roof line would end up way too steep. I went with a 212 pitch, which is just fine for the shingle material that I'm going with. Now, this is the point where I was checking for plumb on the inside of the post to make sure that they were parallel with the building. Then I could attach it to the existing rafter tails with two screws. Since I am going with 2x4s, I did make these on 16 inch centers. And I used some of those Simpson Strong Tide brackets to attach them. And let me tell you, by the end of all of these rafters, I was very worn out. And before you say it, I did end up getting a smaller hammer that I could manage a little bit easier. Now, looking back on it, this is the one thing that I would change if I could. Instead of going with a 2x4 on the side most rafter, I guess, I guess it's called the rake, um, I ended up going with a 2x6, and I wish I would have went with a 2x8, but I guess hindsight and all that. What, what I did was cut into the roof line and then cut the 2x6 rake to the exact angle and then just fit it into place and attached it. Now with the rake in place, I could now cut the 2x8 header to the exact length that I needed it. Okay, framing is done, on to the decking. So at this point, I, I had to call in some help in order to get those full sheets up there. 
And of course it became much easier after getting the very first sheet down. But I would make sure that it would fall on the center of a rafter and then use my pneumatic nailer to nail it all into position. I first did all of the full sheets along the back and then came back and did all the partial pieces up front. So when you're ducking, you want to stagger your joints. So I intentionally cut this one a little bit shorter so that it would not be on the same seam as this one. All right, moving right along. Now it was time to lay down the paper. A buddy of mine had a roll of synthetic roofing paper, so he gave it to me for doing this job. Thank you, buddy. And instead of using roofing nails, I ended up using my slap stapler. And this made very quick work of putting this down. And I made sure whenever I got to the back of the roof line to put the existing paper over this paper. Then I came back and applied a drip edge. Now the shingles I'm going with only require a drip edge along the front edge. So I did not have to apply a drip edge to either one of the sides. All right, and now onto the shingling. Now, the material I'm going with is made by a company called Ondeline, and not only do I think that they are prettier than conventional shingles, but they're also more environmental friendly. They are made up of 50% recycled material that is infused with asphalt, but they are just as simple to install as conventional shingles. I started off by preparing what will be my starter row of shingles, and for these, the company makes these foam inserts just to prevent insects or birds from getting into those corrugations. And to make installing them simple, I applied a little bit of spray adhesive just to keep them in place while I'm moving around the shingles. But then I moved them all to the roof and started installing them. Now for the very first shingle, you do have to install an additional piece of foam in that very last corrugation, just because another, another shingle is not gonna be overlapping it. So I set it in place measured out my overhang, which in my case I wanted an inch and a half, and then put in a screw. Then I went to the opposite end of the shingle, not going to the very last corrugation since another shingle will have to be overlapping it, but to the second last corrugation and also put in a screw after measuring the overhang was the same. Then I could fill in the remaining corrugations in between. So my back porch is that direction. So by starting the shingling on this side, all of the overlapping seams are gonna be on this side of the corrugation so that whenever you look down the roof line from the back porch, you're not gonna be able to see them. As you can see, they overlap very simply. And then it's just a matter of repeating the process, putting in the first screw, the second to last screw, and then filling it in. When it came time to start the second row, I used a box blade with a hook on the end in order to cut off one corrugation. And this is just to stagger the seams of the shingles. Now, since my roofing paper doesn't have any marks, I just measured the reveal of that first row of shingles in order to line up the second. Then since I was already on this side, I went ahead and cut and installed the remaining shingles so that I could work all the way to the back of the roof line and fill it in completely. So this is called an apron piece and it's gonna uh, transition from these two angles. So I'm gonna take the flat portion and work it under this then I'm gonna have to cut this back row to be a shorter tile. And I'm gonna be working it under this apron piece, and then of course over this piece. All in all, I was super impressed with how simple and easy it was to install. It took me right over three hours to install it all, which I don't think is bad considering I don't roof for a living. If you want more information about these shingles, then I will leave you links in the description of the video. It's pretty impressive stuff. After getting all of the shingles installed, I moved on to what they call the verge pieces, which is just the pieces that go along the edge to not only give it a completed look, but also these are the pieces that take the place of needing to install a drip edge along the rake. All right, and that's actually where I'm gonna have to stop for this week. However, next week in part two, I'm gonna be doing the decking for the underside, running some lights, as well as finishing out the posts. So stay tuned if you are interested. Of course, I would love to hear what you think about my project so far in the comment section below. So stay tuned for part two. I will see you soon. You're the coolest. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. All right, now just bring that on up here now. Hey, bring that on up here now. <laughs>